Hey everybody, this is Kenji Lopez Alt from Serious Eats, and today I'm showing you how to make spaghetti alla puttanesca, which is a relatively modern pasta dish dating from around the mid 20th century and coming from southern Italy. It's one of those pasta dishes where it takes about the same amount of time to build the sauce as it does to boil the pasta, which makes it an ideal dish for a weeknight meal or for an easy weekend. It's only got a few ingredients and all of them are really strongly flavored, so I suggest you make this when everybody's on board or when you're by yourself. You ready? The great thing about puttanesca is that it's made with inexpensive ingredients that store well in the pantry like garlic, anchovies, capers, olives, canned tomatoes, and pasta. To start, place a half pound of pasta in a skillet or saucepan and cover it with water. The water doesn't need to be boiling, your pasta is going to cook just fine either way. Add a big pinch of salt, set it over high heat, and cook, stirring a couple of times until the pasta is just shy of al dente. In the meantime, add a big lug of extra virgin olive oil to another skillet or saucepan. We're talking about a quarter of a cup to start. Add four sliced cloves of garlic, about six finely minced anchovy fillets, and a big pinch of red pepper flakes. Heat the mixture gently over medium heat, stirring occasionally until the garlic is pale golden brown. The idea is to infuse the oil with flavor and to slowly soften the garlic without creating any bitter, overcooked notes. This takes about five minutes. Now add a quarter cup each of chopped capers and black olives and stir them into the mixture. For the tomatoes, I don't like the texture of diced tomatoes, which are set with calcium chloride. It gives them an unnatural firmness. I prefer to use whole peeled tomatoes that I cut down to the right size myself. But not like that, like this. Squeezing the tomatoes through your fingers is faster, less messy, gives you more interesting texture, and is way more fun. Once the olives and capers are added in, go ahead and add a cup of those squished up canned tomatoes and stir to combine. Bring it to a simmer and then check on that pasta. By this point, it should be just shy of al dente, which, like James Bond to the villain in every 007 movie, is exactly where we want it. We've got our sauce and we've got our pasta. We've got to get these two together. I use a pair of tongs to make the introduction, lifting the pasta straight out of the water without bothering to strain it. The neat thing about finishing the pasta in the sauce is that the sauce slows down the speed at which the pasta cooks, giving you a wider window of time between perfectly al dente and overly soft. It's actually a good thing to skip draining the pasta because the starchy pasta water helps the sauce emulsify and coat the strands. I like to finish the dish with a little chopped parsley, some fresh olive oil, and a couple more splashes of pasta water to adjust the texture. A vigorous boil will help the sauce turn creamy. Some purists may claim that cheese has no place in puttanesca. I say that there's a seat reserved at the table for cheese in every conceivable gathering, especially when I'm also invited.